Good afternoon, Texans, and thank you for joining us once again for another edition of our updates to our roadmap for 2020, for fall 2020, I should say. Today I am joined by our provost, Dr. Karen Murray, and also our assistant vice president for student affairs, Dr. Helvie Mason. So thanks to both of you ladies for taking time to, to join us. We're going to get straight into our session today. Uh, I've got a couple updates as, as usual, and then we're going to get into uh, some student uh, portion of the, of the conversation. Uh, certainly focused on our students are back, and so I want to start with that. It is so good to see all of our Texans back on campus, our faculty, staff, and, and more importantly, our students. And it has been a lonely, call it three to five months here uh, without our students and, and seeing the vibrancy and the excitement that each of you bring. And so we're excited. Move in weekend, I want to, I want to say, Dr. Helvey Mason, uh, the volunteers and the student affairs team did an outstanding job. This was our first. Kendall and I were there both days, almost, uh, almost all day, every day. And uh, getting to, to meet our parents and our new students was exciting. And just to see the excitement. I also want to commend our students and our student workers for them adhering to the things that we needed them to be good examples. And, and they wore their face coverings and their face masks. They did an excellent job of, of, of providing a great leadership example of what we expect out of them when they're here uh, with us in our Texan family. Uh, but I know a lot of time, we're going to get into that in just a moment with you, uh, a lot of time went into ensuring that we had a smooth transition, etc. Some of you may have noticed around campus that we have very large tents that are popping up, and that is very deliberate, and, and it's not for <laughs> any type of special event. Uh, I want to talk about uh, this um, for just a moment, or these tents just for a moment. Currently, we have uh, one tent that is uh, fully functional. We're getting ready to place furniture uh, there today and tomorrow. And, and the purpose of these tents um, are to create outdoor uh, living and learning uh, spaces. And, and when I say living, meaning it gives you an opportunity, students and faculty, to get out of the office, get out of the classroom, get out of your dorm room, um, so we create fewer of those cluster opportunities and we want to create some outdoor distancing opportunities. And so I task uh, our CFO, Ms. Lori Beatty, to find some solutions to create some, some alternative opportunities and pathways for social distancing, um, creating some, some outdoor, uh, even learning spaces. And so I could even see where some of our faculty may want to have a class session out there occasionally. And so we will have three of those tents um, across campus. And then also the fourth location will be out by Memorial Stadium. Our Vice President for Intercollegiate Athletics, Lon Reisman, and their team will be, um, they're in the process of getting the furniture out there cleaned. And that pavilion will be open all year long, or all semester long, I should say. Uh, for any student or faculty or staff that just want, that may uh, reside on that part of, of the campus and they want to utilize that facility. And so the tents are there for your use. And it's just another mechanism for us to provide a, spa a safe and healthy learning environment. And that's imperative here. We've always said from day one that placing the value on the health, safety, and well-being of all Texans is paramount in, in every decision that we made. So that's why we're making those investments into those uh, spaces and opportunities. So students, we hope that you take advantage of those. They're there for your use. Um, and until we get through this COVID-19 pandemic, it's important that we continue to create these uh, additional learning spaces. You're going to hear from Dr. Murray how we flipped ballrooms into classrooms and, and lots of other spaces. So let's start on the student side, Dr. Dr. Helvey Mason. Our students are back. Um, and when students are back, obviously certain things will, will go wrong and, um, and, and not work and function as, as intended in dorms and in residential halls and certain spaces that they utilize. So talk to us about if they have an issue currently with their residence hall, et cetera, what's the process? Sure, we were so excited to see everyone move in and it was really hot, but we were able to get 
everyone in a smooth process for transition week. And we're building off of the lessons that we learned through Duck Camp about traffic flow, spacing, and the opportunity for everyone to figure out what that new spacing looks like. As folks are adjusting to their residence hall, issues may come up. So what I'd like to do is take just a few minutes and share the idea of what happens in the case of an issue. Your residential leader is the direct connection to resolve most of those issues and processes. Residential leaders have extensive training and they can connect with you on a daily basis on your floor. You'll see them to the point where you might be sick of them, but you'll be able to address those questions directly to them. If any issues or questions aren't resolved with your residential leader, you can just move that on up to our residential hall directors. So they're there as full-time professional staff who can connect with additional layers of resources and menus of options to make sure that your issues have been resolved. Good. And so um, let's, let's shift gears quickly to talk about student safety and, and, mm -hmm. and health and well-being. We all know, and I think we're, it would be silly for any of us to, to think that we are not going to have a, a, a student that contracts COVID-19 and will have to isolate or quarantine or, or even uh, may feel a need to, to be tested, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about the Wellness Center. I know that a lot, some of our new students may not know where its location uh, currently um, resides. And then talk to me a, a little bit about the process. If, if, if I'm a student here at Tarleton and I feel like that I have been in, in in uh, direct contact with someone that has tested positive or they're beginning to show symptoms, what's the first step mm -hmm. for that student? I think that's a great question. We're all gonna make sure that we're checking in with one another and you're kind of taking a daily inventory on how you feel. If you know you've been exposed to someone who has tested positive or those symptoms are creeping up and you feel like you wanna check in, you wanna make sure and go ahead and make a phone call to our student health center. So that number is in our roadmap and we also have lots of connections online. But instead of queuing up and getting into a waiting room, standing in a hallway with other folks, we want you to be responsible, not just for yourself, but for everyone around you. So go ahead and make a phone call. And what we'll do is we'll do a phone screening option for you. So you can share your symptoms with us. We can connect you with that healthcare professional and they can walk you through the next steps of what's going on, get you connected for testing if we need to, quarantining and isolation. So those opportunities are there for us with our student health center as it stands right now. They'll guide you through that process, but if you do need to quarantine, we know one of the most comfortable places we can be is right at home. And that's a nice option for us. If you have to quarantine while you're on campus or you need to be in isolation, you'll reach out to those residence hall directors and your residential leaders for the next steps in that process. And the same with the mental health well-being as well, correct? So if, if a student feels, um, you know, just overwhelmed with the newness of being a new college student um, and, and certainly living away from home for the first time, uh, s same process, I imagine? You bet. So we do have a 24-7 number that you can call that's on the back of your Texan ID. So that line is answered all of the time and you can connect to our counseling resources. When we think about move-in, COVID, kind of the changing year of 2020, we have so many layers of things that we're processing along with our new academic spaces, connecting to folks in a different way, and sometimes just being distant from people can make us feel distant internally. So if you wanna talk through that with anyone, you could set up an appointment with counseling. They're all right there in that same wellness center and tradition. So you have the opportunity to make an appointment and get connected. And one of the things that I often tell students and, and in particular new students, it's, it's okay not to be okay. And all of us, I mean, think about, I, I can tell you, Dr. Murray and I were six months ago, I guess, second week of March, she and I were faced with literally overnight the burden of what's next. Do we, do we shutter campus? Do we flip all the classes online immediately? Do we extend spring break by a week and give us some catch up time? And, and sh I can assure you, she and I were not okay. I mean, we, we, we were dealing with a pandemic that we had never um, had to even think about uh, facing before. And, and certainly neither of us were prepared uh, for COVID-19 because it didn't exist. And a lot of you are not prepared for some of the things that you're going to encounter, and that's okay. That's part of college, that's the college experience. And encountering some of those bumps in the road is what will make you a better graduate. It will make you a better Texan 
want you to depart, and s depart uh, from Tarleton State. And so it's really important that you reach out, not only on the student side, but also the faculty and staff side. If you need some help, you need assistance, you just want to talk to some, someone, let us know so we can help and be there for one another. And during this time uh, of crisis, I, what I have even fallen more in love with Tarleton is we truly are family and we are there to help and assist one another. And so, Dr. Murray, as we switch gears and we start talking about, uh, we have a record enrollment. I want to I want to brag about a few things today. We uh, have officially uh, broke the 14,000 uh, number or marker, if you will. We have the largest freshman class in history, and and more importantly, Dr. Helvey Mason, I know you'll appreciate this in your role. We have the most diverse freshman class in the history of Tarleton, and so that's a beautiful thing. And, more Texans on campus, it's also imperative that we create that safe uh, learning environment. That learning environment is going to look different this semester, not only here at Tarleton, but at every institution across the country. Dr. Murray, Provost Murray and her staff and, and, and her uh, uh, team of faculty leaders have been developing a new model. Uh, I continue to call it a hybrid model. Model. It's a high flex model. She's going to talk a little more about that in detail today. We, we hit on it maybe two, three weeks ago. She's certainly the, the content curriculum expert. Students, what I, will, what I will ask you to do is to continue to adhere, once you're in those classrooms, to all the things to ensure that not only that you're safe, but our faculty and staff members are safe as well. So making, ensuring that, again, that you wear your face mask um, on campus, but also in those, in those Learning spaces is important, certainly the labs, as some of those uh, spaces could be somewhat um, limited in space. We want to make sure that we keep you safe, but you also have to do your part to keep everyone around you, including our faculty safe. So switching gears, let's talk about we have a record number of students that are, are here at Tarleton. What are some of the measures we're putting into place to clearly uh, define this high flex hybrid learning model? Dr. Murray. Thank you, Dr. Hurley. First of all, I want to uh, convey to everybody just how much work on the part of the faculty has gone into building the curriculum in this fashion. And the, the key words that I've been talking to freshmen, I've talked to three out of six of the colleges so far, and for all of us to keep foremost in our mind three key words, uh, flexibility, be flexible. All of us have to be prepared to, to move with changing demands as the semester goes along. And then the other two words paired together, grit and determination, because each and every one of us, the goal is to get through this semester successfully, get that 15 hours under your belt for this semester. And so to, in order to do that for all of our students, we've designed this high flex curriculum. I like flex because it reminds us of that first key word, flexible. But the high flex curriculum is designed to give students choices depending on the circumstances they find themselves in. Each and every class is being taught in three modalities continuously throughout the semester. Students will be invited by their faculty on which days they are uh, planning for them to come in face to face in their classroom and lab settings. But each and every class will also be made available to students synchronously so that you can actively participate by, by zooming in from a remote site. In that active participation, keep in mind, you'll still be a part of that class. They'll be able to see you. They'll be able to see your surroundings. So get up and get ready for class as you would as if you were coming in. Be prepared to ask questions. Be prepared to respond to questions. It will be an interactive fashion. And that's the best thing for students to choose. If they wake up that morning and they don't quite feel well, nothing's real serious, but make that choice to keep you and your fellow classmates safe. And then likewise, every single class will be recorded so any student can go back and review it. That's an excellent way to review for everyone, but also view it in a recorded fashion if you are really ill or have some real challenges those materials will still be available to you because the key other words, remember, were grit and determination. We're all gonna get through to the end of this semester. Doesn't mean it's gonna end the way it looks, the way we begin it, but we've got the capacity and instruction to get us all through the semester. And so part of this hybrid high flex model, 
So many institutions made the decision to teach a smaller percent of their classes face-to-face, -face. And, and a lot of institutions chose not to teach face-to-face -face at all. And we made a, a very concerted effort because we feel like we are a face-to-face -face institution. Although Tarleton has made great strides in delivering hybrid virtual delivery and, bl and a blended model over the years, um, and, and I think that helped us in our transition uh, as we had a flip literally in, in less than a week to all online. But a majority of our classes from what I gather from faculty and, and uh, Dr. Barkley and, and others, they're planning on a majority of that class being taught face to face. It's the flexible part that if a student isn't able for whatever life may throw at them at that current mo moment, they still have the opportunity to interact in a live setting through that synchronous model, correct? And then the lecture mm -hmm. capture, I think that's a, some great advice from the provost. Be sure to go back and, um, and review those lessons. What a great tool, what a great attribute you've added. I wanna commend you and your staff too. It, it, takes a, it took a lot of planning. Uh, do you roughly know how many courses are, we, we will be delivering just a ballpark in the fall? I don't. That's a really good I know. question. Well, I, I just, don't. It, just thought uh, it's a lot. Tens I mean, of thousands. Uh, yes. Right. I knew yes. It, I tens knew it was of in the thousands yeah. of courses, and and um, and uh, all in this model. Correct. Well, we do have programs that have always been online. Been online. We have correct. some graduate programs that are online, and we have some bachelor's degree completion programs that have always been online for their junior and senior year. Those programs are still available to those student populations in that online format. Right. But the courses that we would have previously taught as 100% face-to-face, all of those have been converted to this HyFlex model. Right. I know this isn't necessary, necessarily your area, but certainly as provost, you have been in the conversation with Kent Styron and SSE. Let, talk to me and our students and, and faculty about ensuring their safety, health and well-being in between those class sessions. I know we have a, a set number of cleanings per classroom per day. What can we expect on that front? So classroom uh, uh, cleaning has been upgraded. They're going through uh, deep cleaning three points during the day. And that is very different from the way we used to do to keep those classrooms very safe. We've also done some things within classes to reduce the seating capacity. So they are physically distanced. We've reduced the capacity in every classroom by 50% uh, in order to achieve that. And then we've moved a lot of classes into spaces on this campus that aren't typically classrooms. As Dr. Hurley mentioned earlier, we're using the ballrooms, the theaters, right. the auditoriums, the room that we're filming in now is being made available as a class so that we can even take some of our larger classes and move them into spaces that will enable more students to attend in a face-to-face -face fashion. Likewise, they're being a lot of attention to directions, entrances and exits in classrooms and directional mobility in the hallways so that students will not cross each other as they, as they move between classes. Uh, we don't want students congregating in places in the building where they used to, and that's where I encourage you to use these outdoor facilities that are out there. Those are good outdoor congregating spaces for you between classes. Likewise, the library, but it's under the same constraints. There have been reduced seating capacity in there. So this gives you spaces to go for those congregating spaces between classes and spaces to study outdoors. Yeah, and that's a good point. One, one of, something I want to emphasize, uh, to, uh, certainly to our students, and, and I, we all know that this semester will be different for all of us as we start creating our natural migration patterns <laughs> and, and patterns w that we often, w we get in holding, holding patterns and we wait for the next class in a certain b place and we've historically done that. And I think it's really important to follow um, the, the, um, the, the guidance of Dr. Dr. Murray in the sense that those migration patterns and holding uh, spaces, if you will, will look different this year. And it's really, really important that students that you help us with this. Again, these are CDC recommendations. These are state um, uh, mandates and orders that are put into place to ensure the health and safety of, of, again, all Texans, but we are a public entity. And so we have to comply with those executive orders from the governor 
to ensure that we're doing what we need to do. Something that's really, really important that I want to stress here. It is obvious that certain events have been moved from the fall to the spring. For example, homecoming and, and other activities, football season, volleyball season, um, some of our um, plays and, and recitals, and some of those will be shifted as well. So from our fine arts through athletics, a lot of those things we're shifting to spring. But this is very important for you to hear, students, if, if we have students that are, and, and parents could help us with this as well, that I, I know are, are joining. We can't get to spring without successfully navigating the fall. And it takes all of us to ensure that we're doing the right thing. And that means you are taking social responsibility. And part of what Dr. Murray just elaborated on is that social responsibility. And that's taking your traditional daily routine and creating a new routine to ensure that, that we create safety traffic patterns and, 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 and social distancing and physical distancing in the proper way. And the same for faculty and staff. I think it's really important for them to help us reiterate to students uh, the, the, around the protocols that we have in place. And so if, if I'm a faculty member and I have uh, a concern or I have a need in terms of, of um, an, a classroom need or we're out of hand sanitation, et cetera, what advice do you, I know, again, this is more for Kent Styron, but as provost, you typically get those uh, emails and calls as well. Mm -hmm. What's next steps? So next step for any faculty member is to report that need to your department head. And then we'll be able to get those, those needs for equipment, special equipment. You might need uh, face shields in the classroom. We'll be able to get those to your department from Central Supply, either through Kent or through our office. Any final um, recommendations, comments, suggestions on behalf, suggestions I should say, on behalf of the Office of the Provost, Academic Affairs for, in particular, students and faculty? Be patient. We're all blazing a new trail, and so we'll have to navigate those new paths together, and we'll have to be flexible. Good. Dr. Helvey Mason, what, what advice do you have for faculty, staff, and students that more student-centric that you have for everyone outside of be patient, which is great. I'm going to end with that as well. So, Stay the course. So we all know what is expected of us, but there's been an enormous amount of hours put into activities that we have shifted, that we've changed so that you can be active and engaged and connecting, meeting new people as you're on your campus journey. So take advantage of those opportunities and you'll see new and different ways to do that. For example, at the Student Affairs Rally the other night, we were loading into Memorial Stadium from multiple entrance points in staggered timelines with socially distanced seating. So you have the opportunity still to connect, to engage, and embrace some new roles and learn all about the tra traditions while you're here at Tarleton, um, but stay the course on your face coverings. Be a good example for those around you, and remember, we're doing this so we can continue to be here face-to-face -face on campus. Excellent advice from both of you. I, I very much appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedules. It's, it's a hectic week for all of us, and I, too, want to reiterate to everyone um, both patience and stay in the course. I think those are two great uh, pieces of advice that we sh all should adhere to and, and adhere to. Next week, we will be joined uh, by our Vice President for Intercollegiate Athletics, Mr. Lon Reisman. We want to start talking about, a lot of our students want to know, since the fall um, athletic season have sh has shifted to the spring, uh, what's that look like and what can we expect and will there be any activities uh, for us to, to participate in or and Lon has some really good ideas around a potential spring football game that we're going to tie into. Uh, I think we're calling it a fall preview. Uh, we may do some things on the, on, with volleyball and some of our other sports as well. We're also going to be uh, joined by someone from the alumni um, services where we've had a lot of questions from alumni and how can they help? How can they still remain connected to the institution? We have the most incredible alumni base in America, and, and our alumni deeply bleed purple, and that's what I love about Tarleton. That's what I've fallen so much in love with over the, the previous years, just how uh, 
integrated and integral our alumni are in, into our DNA. And so we will talk about some events that we're planning on having this year. We are going to push forward and have some face-to-face -face events for alumni. Capacity will be limited more so than, than in years past. We're going to do a lot of virtual meetings as well. I know we've been doing a lot of those virtual meetings. But, but as things start to open up, and, and, and it will, and, and I've often said, COVID-19, this too will pass. It's been slower than expected. But we have to prepare our institution for the other side. And that's why we are one of the institutions that, are, that have the mindset of growing out of this uh, pandemic and positioning ourselves with a future-focused vision now so we can have a future-focused vision moving forward. And so that's why we're continuing to execute um, our roadmap for fall 2020 plan to, to ensure that we have um, a successful spring and then moving beyond COVID-19. Thanks for all of your hard work, uh, your diligence, your patience, and your fortitude to continue to push forward and to ensure that this fall is going to be successful. We're going to have a fun fall. It's going to be different. It's going to be obviously certain, certain protocols and, and safety procedures in place to protect all of our Texans. Thank you for joining this session and the sessions in the past, and we look forward to seeing you again next week. And Foreverably Purple and Roll Texans.